Hi, I'm Brian K. Smith, the Human Potential Specialist, and I'm coming to you today just to help process the tragedies that have happened in the United States over the past couple of days. There have been lots of lives lost, but I want to point out just what I think is the hypocrisy of this movement in terms of let's be supportive of the police officers while we forget about both uh, Alton Sterling and Philando Castile. Now I want to say this and, and begin by saying I am not here to apologize. I'm not going to apologize uh, on behalf of all black people because the alleged shooter in Dallas was a black man. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to suggest is the fact that almost every black person that has been given space on the airwaves over the past few days who have been able to comment on this tragedy has had to begin with an apology on behalf of all black people. I think there's something wrong with that. If all lives truly matter, if everyone was equal and everyone were given the same respect, then what I would see on a normal basis after one of the police officers, primarily a white police officer, shoots or kills a black person, is that I would see other police officers get on TV and apologize on behalf of all police officers. I would see other good intentioned white people get on TV and apologize on behalf of all white people as a preference to their being allowed to give their opinion, share their expertise on the subject. But no, that doesn't happen. But yesterday and the day before I watched person after person who happened to be black get on television and begin whatever comment they were talking about, whether they were lawyers, police officers, community activists, it didn't matter. They all had to begin by apologizing for the behavior of one misguided person. Micah Johnson, if he did these things that he said he did or, or as they unravel this, he's a sick individual and I want him to be treated as such. But also, I find it ironic that even his death proves that black lives don't matter. They sent a robot in and blew the man up. Now think about that. Dylan Roof killed nine people in a church in South Carolina and was able to be arrested and taken to Burger King. He's in a jail cell present day. James Holmes killed people in a movie theater in Colorado and was taken in alive. He's in a jail cell. But when it came down to Mr. Johnson, we had no choice but to blow him up. Now I don't want to charge second guessing a SWAT team, but I simply want to make a suggestion. If this robot was able to carry a bomb and have it delivered to Mr. Johnson, that same robot could have been used to carry and deploy tear gas, ultrasonic sound, strobe lights, or any other form of non-lethal weapon, which then would have enabled the police to arrest him, bring him to trial, and let him have justice. Now ultimately, since Texas is a death penalty state, he probably would still be killed, and I would be okay with that. Because the law, the court system, would have merited out the justice. Growing up in Chicago, there are two rules I learned very early on in life. If you run from the police, rule number one, if you run from the police and they catch you, you're going to get beat up. Rule number two, if you ever shoot and kill a police officer, they are going to kill you. If black lives matter, that rule wouldn't exist. I wouldn't have had to learn it at a young age. I wouldn't be sharing it with you right now. But that's the reality of this in this country. And so I want you to pause for a minute and ask yourselves, what was the hurry? You had a suspect cornered, trapped, couldn't leave. Why not wait him out? So what if he sat there all night? Sooner or later, he's going to get tired. He's going to get hungry. There's all kinds of things that you could have done. And while I recognize that the longer he sat there armed as he was, some police officers' lives would have still been in danger. But that's the job. They sign on every day to put a badge and a gun on to go out and serve and protect us, even at the expense of their own lives. It's a difficult job, and I acknowledge that. But I just wonder, if black lives matter, couldn't we just take a little longer time and let it play out? 
The Branch Davidians were bombed and set on fire. And as a result of that, we changed our policies. And supposedly, we weren't supposed to be bombing and setting and burning other people anymore. Not as an attempt to arrest them. But I find it ironic that in the history of this nation, the first time we deploy a bomb to arrest or disarm one subject, it happens to be a black man. And the last time that we deployed a bomb, it happened to be against a group of black people. Anybody want to look up the MOVE movement in Philadelphia? We blew up an entire block that time. When does it end? Where do we get to say that we really do believe all lives matter and that we'll stop this nonsense? So I respectfully again say to you, I'm not going to apologize, but I am going to question. I'm Brian K. Smith, the Human Potential Specialist. Thank you.